I just want to welcome you all to uh, today's lab tour. Um, this event is hosted in partnership with uh, Gladstone's Women's Initiative. Um, March is Women's History Month, so we're taking this opportunity um, to highlight many of the amazing women scientists here at Gladstone. Um, we're also highlighting um, a lot of women scientists on our social media, so make sure to follow us for all of that. Um, a few housekeeping notes for everyone. So if we're gonna be taking questions throughout the presentation. If you have questions, please submit them in the Q&A button, which is located um, at the bottom of your screen, and we'll be filtering those out and asking them throughout the entire tour. So submit those anytime you want. Um, we'll also probably have some Q&A time at the end as well. Um, with that, I'm going to be handing it over to Blaze, um, who is our the core director of the histology and light microscopy tour. Um, and yeah, Blaze, you can uh, take it over. Thank you, Agvina. My, as I did not say, my name is uh, Blaise Njamen. I am the director of the histology and light microscopy core at Glastone. Um, our wonderful team would like to welcome you to this virtual tour uh, to showcase uh, what we do and what all the wonderful women that you guys are seeing uh, contribute every single day to accomplish Glastone mission. With that said, I will just move to the second, move to the next page, sorry, one second. Oops, good. So the histology, uh, first of all, I, will, I would like to remind people that um, Glastone vision uh, is to overcome and um, is to overcome and solve diseases through transformative biomedical research. And uh, the histology, unlike microscopic core, actually um, helped, helped to achieve this vision uh, by providing uh, technical assistance, training, consultation, and collaboration with all aspects of experimental design, sample preparation, image acquisition, processing, and data analysis. And also to do that, we uh, the core is equipped with state-of-art technologies and expertise in histology, um, high-resolution uh, imaging, confocal microscopy, uh, light sheet microscope, spinning disc, spinning disc microscopy, uh, and also uh, optical projection. <clears throat> So in the following slide, I will kind of summarize uh, what we do. First of all, when we mention histology, people remember, has to remember that, uh, we have to remember that the stem of that word is uh, tissue, histo, tissue. Uh, microscopy means that we are kind of trying to visualize stuff that we cannot see through our naked eyes. So that's the goal. So basically what happened is that we have certain workflow at the core uh, usually people bring us biological sample to, because they want to do the research or they're doing some clinical studies. Uh, and those uh, sample can be uh, the whole organism or part of those organism like organs or organoids, tissue and cells. And you can see that that's all the building block of uh, an organisms. And those we could, we could analyze them either live or fixed. So um, generally we have uh, three main workflow at the core. The first one is if we have like live cell, we can just uh, stain them with live dye, uh, dye and then use microscope to image those uh, process and data analysis. This, the second process that is very important for us is um, when actually we cannot analyze life, uh, life tissue or organism, what we do is we have to uh, try to preserve those um, uh, biological sample 
uh, through the process of fixation. And that can be through um, coal or using chemical, like uh, uh, some chemicals like ethanol, uh, methanol, paraformaldehyde. So after those tissue are preserved, what we do also is that usually they are very soft. What we do is we process them in a way that uh, it can be easy to cut them in pieces in order to visualize it because sometimes we cannot bring the whole, the whole organism or the organ and put under the microscope. That's actually very small. So basically what we do is we, when, when we preserve those, those uh, biological samples, we process them in a way that we can either um, put them in small block and cut them through sectioning before we stain and visualize it under the microscope. So this workflow, for example, today would be, you guys will, we will show, we'll kind of show you how we do it in daily life. Uh, the other way is that if we have the whole tissue, there are new uh, technology that are developing. Basically, instead of sectioning them, uh, we can just clear those tissues. Because one of the problems in um, histology and microscopy is that when you have thicker tissue, it's very difficult for light to go through. So basically, what we do is we, we, use, we use chemical or other method to render that tissue clear so that we can image the whole, the whole thing and have all that volume and have volume imaging. So uh, that's why in, in the right, you can see that we kind of summarize all the services that we provide at the core. So we provide the histologies. So usually when we talk about histology, these are the process and microscopy. Uh, we provide both bright field, white field, confocal, light sheet that I mentioned in the beginning. So that's um, using the microscope at the core of this section of our core. And the third part of our core is data analysis, right? So we, we analyze them and then the researcher will get those data, interpret them to either advance the research or um, find a way to cure diseases. So this, is, this slide is kind of an illustration of, of a practical illustration of all, what I've, I've said. So this is some of the instrument that we have at the core. And uh, here is an example of live cells. So we can see how things are moving in the life, in a life in a cell and also in a tissue. For example, here is a blood vessel, right? The, 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 the dark matter there are like, um, red blood cell moving, and we have some particle that are staining those tissue. So basically we go from either animals, we process them either live or fix. And also I mentioned tissue clearing. For example, here, this is a, 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 a blood vessel. And in the background is my name, you cannot see it. If we process them to, through tissue clearing, we can then image in large volume here. So, uh, so this is kind of that illustration where we can do live cell, live tissue, fixed cell, fixed, fixed cell, uh, fixed tissue, fixed tissues. We have new other techniques that we do. And also in the workflow, we have spatial staining. And this is very important for clinicians to, to detect uh, diseases. So we also offer that. Um, so that, that's basically the summary. And, I put this slide in the beginning, but also put it at the end because behind all this work are uh, great um, uh, team staff. And then I will pass, um, I will ask then two members, Roma and Anna, to take on and show you how the daily life go, what, how we, we, we do stuff in a daily basis. Thank you. Okay. Hi, thank you, Blaze. Hello, everybody. This is Anna, and Roma is filming me using the cell phone right now. Um, we are the research technologies, and also we have a third research technology, Pengron, who is right cutting right now, and I will introduce to you all to have. 
And here we have an example of uh, samples that the uh, players talk about. We have an eye here, which is very old. This is an example of sample. Oh, we have a mouse embryo. We get a lot of uh, tissue from mouse. Here we see a, a whole mouse embryo. And these are an, an other embryos that are in a, they are smaller because they are in a developing uh, a stage that is earlier. So I'm, I'm going to show you how to, um, in case that we get uh, this kind of sample of embryo, what do we do? in order to visualize the tissue of the embryo that usually is the heart, but can be the brain. Um, so once we get the sample, the samples are fixed. And uh, as uh, Blaise told you, uh, we need to fix the tissue in order to preserve the, the morphology. It's the same as if you keep a, a beef steak in the refrigerator for a long time, it will smell and it will lose the structure it will fall apart. We don't want this to happen to our samples. That's why we fix them. Usually we fix them with formalin, but there are other kind of fixatives that can be uh, freezing the sample. Once the tissue is uh, fixed, we place it in 70% ethanol and in four degrees, and we put this tissue in a cassette like this. We close the cassette, we put the cassette in 70% ethanol, and then we're going to process this tissue. And this is the tissue processor. This is like a washing machine or something like this. What the tissue processor does is automatically goes through the, the, processing, the processing. So first, what it does, it goes through a gradient of ethanol, it starts with 70% ethanol and then higher concentration until 100%. And in these steps, what we do, we remove the water from the tissue. And then we remove the ethanol from the tissue using a clarifying um, uh, region, which in this case is xylene. Xylene is really toxic. So the idea in the core now, it's moving um, forward to a more environmentally friendly regions. Uh, but for now, we still work with xylene. And with the xylene, we remove the ethanol. And we, uh, by removing ethanol, uh, we uh, allow uh, the wax to penetrate. We are using paraffin. And with the paraffin, what we do is uh, we make the, the tissue harder uh, in order to cut it uh, in a thin, uh, very, very thin sli slices. Uh, the thickness of these slices are usually five micrometers, microns. Uh, imagine a piece of paper, a regular piece of paper. Uh, are, uh, it's 100 microns. If you divide this thickness by 20, you will get the thickness of the slides of the tissue you want. So we put the cassette inside the processor like this. There is a rack and then we cover it. And then we, we choose a, a program, a routine program that depends on the size of the sample, the thickness and the nature of the sample. The samples that have um, a lot of um, fat, usually they take more time. For example, the brain and other samples like lung, it takes le less time. So we're going, for example, there are um, uh, processes. It's a very old <laughs> machine. So we go to here, process select, and then we push a start and this it goes on. It can take from three hours to 17 hours. So usually we run the processor overnight. And then the next day, we take the sample out. And this sample has no water anymore. And it, it, the, there is a lot of, uh, the paraffin has been, it, is, it occupies the, the place of the water. So, and then the tissue will look like this. 
So, usually, this is the embryo before and after, and I will show you. So, this is how it looks, our embryo before. See the size? Now it has paraffin. It's much bigger, and this is after. So, the, the tissue usually is rinsed and has no more water. And now, instead of water, it has wax. And this wax makes the tissue harder and easier to cut. So what we do now, we're going to use big molds. This is a mold. And we're going to use the same paraffin that is in the processor, the same wax. And we're going to embed the tissue. So an embedding is putting the tissue oriented the way we want. And then this is warm. So this is a hot plate and keeps the paraffin warm. And then we're going to put this paraffin that it's warm and melted on a cold plate and see that the paraffin is getting whiter. And now I'm going to cover this embryo with the lower part of the cassette. And I'm going to wipe for it to get uh, totally harder. Now it's still melted. And we will get something like this. So this is totally hardened. And now the tissue is embed in a bed of paraffin wax. So now we can cut this tissue and it will not break. And also this wax, we can keep this wax for years. And the structure of the cells and the tissue it's uh, very, very similar to the reality. It's a way to preserve the tissue. Fixing and uh, embedding it with paraffin by removing all the water and So now we're going to the cutting room. This is Feng Chan. She's one of our Technologies. She is really good cutting embryos and a small sample. She's amazing. So this is we have two microphones. The microphone is is a device, a machine that is used to cut these super super thin samples of paraffin sections. So we put the block here. Okay. And here we have a blade. And basically, it, this is a very simple machine. It goes up and down with a wheel here. And then we cut the uh, section. I'm going to, to put a block that is ready to get from this. The blocks need to be very cold. Yes, but from a saving block, they need to be cold and nice in order to get a good section. And then we go up and down until we get a ribbon. This is a very old section, but sometimes they are dry. So see that we are getting a ribbon of tissue without a frame, and now it's getting the ribbon. Okay, so see, this is the ribbon. So each one, of these uh, sections, they are five microns. We can cut it uh, even thinner, but usually five is the standard in this part. And then we put the sections here in a water bath and see that the, this is the tissue and this is the frame of paraffin. We're going to cut in two and two sections is the, the standard as well for this size of samples. And then we're going to take a glass slide. This is a special glass that uh, is charged uh, for the tissue to latch. And then we're going to, uh, see? So the, here we have the two sections, one and two. And now, as you can see, it's very transparent. 
So it's difficult to see the cells and the structures in the cells, how the cells are organized uh, in here. It's in there, but it's very difficult to see. That's why we are going to stain. And uh, we say we have a lot of different kinds of stainings. Here is an example of colorful stainings. See, this is an example of Mason trichrome and um, Picrosidius red. Each color is a different component of the cells, collagen. We can see collagen in a color, the nuclei in another color, etc. H and E staining is one of the most common stainings in the core, and we don't do it manually. We have this machine here. It's an automatic uh, slide stainer. And uh, we put a label. We have different labels, so different colors like this. Each color is for a kind of staining. So here, for example, I have a proton sample. And uh, this, this color is for H and E stain for proton sample. So it's as easy as taking this, the slide, putting the slide here, and then we close it. And you will see that this is the like an arm that moves. The device reads the color and knows which kind of staining. And it's going to grab the rack with the slide. And it's going to stain. So we can stain about 60 at a time in parallel. So now it's going to the water and it's removing the osity. In this case, it's frozen sample. But in the case of the paraffin, paraffin samples, we need to remove the paraffin, doing the opposite process, Just starting with xylene and finishing with ethanol and water. So when this machine is done, we have something like this. Usually we cover the sample and we use a cover of sleep medium, but sometimes we image without cover and sleeping. And once we have uh, the samples fixed, we remove the water, we substitute the water with paraffin, or we freeze the samples in OCP, which is another process, and stain them. We have the samples ready to watch and uh, visualize them using the microscope to image them. So usually, um, this is a regular microscope. It has the ocular sphere. So we, we take a look to the samples from here. We put the sample here. And the light comes from here. It goes through the magnification lens, and I can see my sample here. This is only for the core, but usually, when we have a lot of samples and we need to scan them and take pictures, we don't do it manually. We have an automatic light scanner. The automatic light scanner uses these racks here. We put the samples here, like three. We can put. Uh, this is 50. We can scan 200 slides at a time. And uh, from here, Roma is going to show you how the slide scanner is used. Thank you, Anna. So, as you can see, uh, Anna demonstrated how to get to the slides. Once the slides are done, we have our imaging station. So this can do a lot of slides at a time, right? This holds up to 50 and we have four of them. So, so maybe we can show the parts of the scope here. Yeah. So um, basically here is the grabber. You can think of it as like little fingers. It takes the slide, it picks it up, and it puts it on the stage. Um, the objectives here are above the stage. So um, if the objectives are below the microscope, this ones are up top. So this is called the upright microscope. Mm -hmm. And um, in the other microscope Anna showed, 
we have oculars here. Um, since this is automatic, we don't use them, so they're blocked off. Mm -hmm. And here we have a camera. Yep, the camera is right here. You can see it is turned on. So the camera is taking the pictures that we see in the in the computer. Okay. So now they're uh, generally in the core. We'll do what's called a pre-scan. So um, at high magnification, we don't want to scan the entire slide. Most of the slide is empty space. So we do what's called a pre-scan. So we image it at very low magnification. And then we choose a specific area we want it to scan at a higher magnification. Okay, so Anna put in three slides. So I select one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. I have it to image at 10x. And then I press play. And you can see over there. Yeah, now it's going up and it's doing a calibration and counting the slides. It's going up. So these, these uh, microscope also can uh, be used for uh, with fluorescent uh, stain slides, which Blaze told you about, about it, that we can also see the structures that we cannot see because they are transparent uh, using fluorescent light. And now it's calibrating the stage. See how it's moving? It's pretty cool. And now it's going to take a picture of the label. So we never make mistakes here because we have the pictures of the label. We know always um, which sample is which. So now you see that it's scanning. And it's scanning using a lower magnification, which is 1.5. Okay, so now on the software, you can see we have a scan of the entire slide, right? Um, it picks up any, what it thinks it's tissue, which it's not always tissue. So here it thought the label was tissue. Yeah. So we can adjust it to only take um, a small section. Okay. And uh, these little dots here, they're what's called focal points. So a focal point is a place where it will refocus the sample at this spot. And then that way um, it ensures if there's enough that the whole entire sample is focused. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then once we're happy with it, uh, we can press play on the 10x objective and it will scan on the 10x. <laughs> and here we have some um, pictures from, from the other slides. We can open them. Uh, the imaging software we're using to view it is called ImageScope. And you can see here's the picture of the label. Show them the liver. This is liver. Oh, make sure it's on the camera. <laughs> yeah, here's the label right here. So this is a liver sample. Mm -hmm. This is the out view over here. And so I can zoom in real close mm -hmm. and you can see there's red, green and the red. Mm -hmm. See here the collagen is green, is red, the nuclei is a uh, dark uh, green bluish and then this here you see these are the red blood cells and uh, this is a kind of a staining we can stain the red blood cells in other kind of colors and also the collagen there are lots of kind of uh, stainings that we are using here in the core and also we have immuno immunofluorescence staining that maybe we could open one yeah here we have liver. This is a green one, and you can see the nuclei. Mm -hmm. They're kind of dark green. So see, we can see well the nuclei here. Yeah. And the connective tissue is dark in this case. 
And um, since these are colorful, uh, this is called a bright field image. They've talked about uh, fluorescence and bright field. The difference between fluorescence and bright field is bright field is used using white light. So this is the actual color of the sample when we looked at the slide. In fluorescence, if you look at the slide, the sample look itself looks clear, mm -hmm. but when it's imaged, it's imaged in the dark, so it's on a black surface. Mm -hmm. So bright field has a white surface. And this is a pig skin. Open disc. Bacon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we can open a slide if you want, or we can see a fluorescent slide using another scope. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, we have our fluorescent. Uh, this this scope can also do fluorescent, mm -hmm. um, but we mostly use it for bright field. Actually, we use it for fluorescent. Yeah, when we have a lot of slides to scan, we use this one. But if we want to get like super resol uh, a, a, a very big resolution, so we we want to see like very tiny stuff without this to be blurry, then we use confocal and uh, high resolution microscopes. Uh, yeah, so the difference between this fluorescent and the fluorescent I'll show you is uh, this one is what's called a confocal and the other one's what, what's called a wide field microscope. So here we have our and, uh, confocal, all the light goes through a very small pinhole which creates uh, the high resolution. And resolution is just uh, the, the distinct difference between two points. So something with a low resolution, it will be hard to differentiate between the two points, but something with a higher resolution, it, it's able to. And you can see here, this box, it, um, keeps the heat and the humidity within the uh, within the sample. So this can do live cell imaging. Uh, the other microscope can't. Mm -hmm. So you can see it moves up. And then we also have um, this microscope, however, can only do four slides maximum at a time versus 200 on the other. Mm -hmm. And um, also, this microscope uses lasers. You can see that there's seven laser lines over here, which all uh, emit different wavelengths. So here we have 405, so 445, 514, 594, 405, 488, 561, and 640. Yeah, we have different uh, kind of fluorescent lights also there, but we use uh, in the in the slide scanner that we show you before. But it's not laser light, and it's not confocal, which means that we have a lot of out of focus uh, image there. And here, what we get is a very good in focus image because of the laser and the pinhole. I think should we look at the light sheet? Okay. Yeah, we can. Can we take an image? Open. We can open a me, an image here to to see an example of a good confocal fluorescent image. Okay. So here also we use it when uh, we don't fix the tissue, and we use the tissue with the cells alive. We want to keep the cells alive, so that's why we have this chamber that will have a mix of. Um, oxygen and CO2 that uh, and temperature and humidity that allows the, the, la the cells to be happy and survive in here. Otherwise, they would die. And also, we, it's more real, no? I mean, if you want to see what's happening in the cell, uh, in reality, you need the cell alive. After so much fixation and xylene and ethanol, uh, and also, you can see that there is oculars here, and this one also has a camera. So on the um, octopus that we showed earlier, the slide scanner, we only had the camera. On the first microscope, we only had the oculars, but this one is nice because you can do both. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and uh, one question came in 
Um, yeah. Is there a specific type of tissue that's analyzed best as live or fixed? Um, usually when it's live, you're working with live, it, you work with cells. And uh, when we work with like large tissue and we work with fixed tissue, large structures. Uh, Blaze, you are on mute. You are mute. So I will also try to add that uh, it depends on what people are looking, right? If you are looking at uh, life process, we can do from cell, tissue, uh, like embryo. We can do all that. Uh, so, so it depends on what the researcher needs. We, we, we have all the equipment to do either way, from, from tissue, from cell to organ, embryo, organoid, to small organism. So we could, we could analyze them both live and fix, depending on the need. Thank you. So now it's calibration. The stage is calibrating, it's moving around. It's very important that the stage to be flat to have the, a good in-focus image. If it's a little bit crooked, we will never get a good in-focus in, around the slide or, or the well. Hmm. So these systems are pretty automatized and they run, you can, uh, only with a computer you can run the microscope. The only thing you need to do is physically switch on and off and put the sample. And after that, it's all automatic. You can also see here, this is touch screen. So you can see our objectives we have. So we have 4X, 10X, 20X, 40X, and 60X. Our 60X is an oil objective. So instead of having the slide flat on just the surface, we ha actually have to put oil in order to achieve a better image. So we can open an image. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is an example. So this. you can see the different laser lines. This is, um, these are pollen beads and you can see at each channel that it has a different emission. So you can see this one, is more, um, there's more blue signal in the center versus the red signal is more on the outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe we can go to the slide. Okay. Yes. Uh, light sheet. Now. Yes. Okay. So now we're gonna go to the light sheet. Um, the light sheet um, is different from the rest of the scope because um, basically the other scope looks at point by point um, when they're imaging. Uh, the light sheet, it looks at a whole plane at once. So you can see, you can imagine it's a lot faster to image on the light sheet than it is elsewhere. So this is for usually larger samples or if you want an area. And as Blaise said, that uh, we can uh, visualize a, a full organism, like a small embryo or even like a piece, big piece of brain here, a heart, an organoid, big organoids. The only thing here is like, we need to clarify the sample. To, we need to make the sample transparent in order to, to see, uh, to get a good uh, image, 3D image, because the, the, what it does this microscope, it takes, it focuses in different um, levels of the sample, that's why it needs to be transparent. It goes through the sample. And then uh, digitally, there is an algorithm that uh, puts all the, uh, it like, it stitches all the images of the different levels to the, uh, together and makes a 3D image okay. that we can show you. Okay, and also- uh, and Anna, Roma, you could yeah. actually show the, you could actually show this, the sample holder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so um, the slide scanner, that one was the upright microscope. The objectives were 
on the top facing down. Um, the last one we looked at was an inverted microscope, so the objectives were facing upwards. This one you can see is very different because they're like kind of on the side and the sample is in the center of them. Hmm. So there are two on the side and one in the back. We so. have three. One, two, and three. Okay. And to add, to add something on that, the one on the side is the one that produced the excitation uh, wave, um, ex the excitation um, illumination, right? Okay. So, so actually, the, the main difference between the light sheet and the confocal microscope is that confocal usually is a point scanning. But here we do the name light sheet is we, uh, the, the, the objective of the side will create a sheet of light that will go through the, the sample. And that's what we call it uh, uh, single plane illumination. But basically, you are eliminating the sample with a plane, not with a point, right? So single, so it's a plane, and that's what makes it faster. So you are imaging a plane at the time, and that's mm -hmm. where and that creates uh, a lot of data, big data, in a very short amount of time. Yeah. Also, we need to stain these samples because they are transparent, and usually with fluorescence. So yeah, so this is the chamber, the samples will go in above, but we fill it with liquid and it images through these little windows here. And they have to be very clean in order to get good images. <laughs> but you basically put it here and then um, it will, we put the sample above on the top and then we can image. And you can see an image that's already on the computer. I don't know what the, this looks like organoids. Can you see? Okay. Yeah. If you yeah. engage so, out of so, study. So I'm kind of I'm kind of manipulating this microscope remotely. So what you guys are doing, so these are several stack, uh, several Z stack. And if you look at the bottom, it's acquiring about uh, close to two two thousand slide slices. <laughs> in four color and this takes less than a, less than an hour mm -hmm. but with a confocal this would take you weeks uh days to do all this to achieve all this and this is also a large volume data so so basically this solution here is for large sample uh, clear tissue as uh, um, and I said, but also if you are just looking at the surface, if you don't want to look inside, you can actually image bigger sample, non-clear, but remember that will be limited at the surface of the, of the organism or tissue that you are looking. Yeah, um, sorry, we are getting out of time. Also for the training, we use aloe vera, which is naturally transparent. So the important thing is that the samples need to be, need to be transparent. And it takes a long time, right, place to prepare these samples. This is the, the issue of this kind of imaging microscope. The sample preparation sometimes is long, takes a yes. long time. Of, yes, depending on, on the method that you use uh, yeah. and the, the approach that you use to clear the sample. There are faster methods that are very harsh. For mm. example, the iDisco, um, they are fast. So mm -hmm. those are organic solvent. They're very harsh, but they are very uh, fast to, to clear the tissue, but also we have, to into into consideration. Hello? we have to take into consideration that sometimes those harsh might also affect the, the, uh, the fluorescence. So there are, there are um, slow methods that are longer, but okay. I had another I had another question come in. Um, what is the sample holder that you use for large samples, like whole mouse brain? Do you have? Uh, the size of the sample holder, is that correct? What is the, yeah, the question is, what is the sample holder that you use for large samples? So we have, um, so Roma just showed one. There's another one that are bigger. 
this uh, that are bigger that can contain that that are uh, close to uh, more than this the area is more than ten millimeter uh, ten millimeter by ten millimeter more than uh, that. we can show you visually one yeah so if we have a large sample we can actually glue here and then um, it will stick off the end and we can. Put yeah, maybe we can but it show. still has to fit in the chamber. So. Yeah, see. So the sample, it's large here. And we put it, yeah, maybe you can like show them yeah. how it goes. Uh, so, so yeah, basically we have this, we'll attach it here. And then um, the sample will Go down and we'll lower it to the objective. And in the, the chamber, the chamber is full of buffer. Mm -hmm. So maybe we could, if, if. And then lastly, real quick before the phone dies, we also have an image station here. Um, not too exciting, it's just a regular computer, but it can hold a lot of data. Maybe Blaze, you can show them a 3D image that it's taken it by the light sheet. I don't know if you have one. Yeah. So the most important thing to mention on the on there is that we have the Amaris software. It's one of the latest software in in data analysis. Um, we Glaston have the later version. We also have uh, other software like um, MATLAB, Python, that are geared towards uh, data analysis. Yeah, okay. So I don't know if you want uh, to show them one 3D image and rotate uh, it because they are pretty cool. Yeah, I think for sake of time, uh, so some of those 3D image, I have one reconstructed onto the light sheet. Uh, Yeah. And so, uh, please, you can share on your screen because it will look better anyway than us yeah. doing it on the phone. Yeah. So, great. Uh, nice meeting everyone. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. You want to flip yeah. it? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I hope you like it. So yes, that, I, was, that was bye. excellent. Um, if anyone has any other questions, um, I'm sure Blaze can uh, answer them. Um, otherwise, we that's let's see. I'll just wait. Give it a second. But yeah, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, this, this, yes. This one question. Sure. I think it's from Lana. She's asking where is the reflectometer? So basically that question, so basically when we do tissue clearing, uh, we need to know the index of refraction of the imaging solution that, the, so there's a clearing solution. Usually those solutions have a high index of refraction. So it means that index of refraction basically is how well the light go through uh, a, a, a sample. So we have uh, in the, she's asking where we have that. We have that into the, the cabinet, the cabinet by the, the draw by the uh, light sheet microscope. We have a reflectometer there because it's critical. You need to know, uh, you need to know the index of refraction of your imaging solution in order to have a good image. Uh, another question. Let's see if there's another one. Nope, I think that was. Uh... Anyway, we we are very, we are available by you know by email by phone. If you guys need help with any aspect of the uh, your biological imaging, and so you can see that I step back to kind of showcase how this wonderful stuff, um, what they do every day. Uh, so we want to be, I want to be very thankful for them, for all their service. And 
in the spirit of uh, the Women Women Month, say thank you again for all the women with all the wonderful job that they do to advance science and our life in general. Yeah, and here you can see a cell rotating. It's a single cell to say bye to you all. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Thank, you, Thank you, everyone. And I'm sure if you have any further questions, um, the core would be happy to answer them. You can send us an email. Um, but thank you all for joining. And thank you, especially to Anna and Roma for their tour. This was absolutely fabulous. Have a good, good rest of your day, everyone. Bye the same. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.